Good morning, everybody. It's Tree. Um. Wow. Well, I was painting. I got paint in my hair. <laughs> um. Anyhow, Draco told me that I need to go to my master masons. I need to call him today and meet with him right away and go to his office and do the chant and bring my crystal and then do the chant with the crystal on my head there at the office in order to secure or anchor um, the in order to keep the bridge open the bridge like a bridge it's like a bridge I guess or the door or whatever um, because he's have they're having a hard time staying anchored in my body because I'm keep I'm I keep um well I'm second guessing my decision. Um, I watched my video of Meet Draco and I was like, oh my god, that's ugly, that's scary. I don't want to be like that all the time. And he assured me that. He can only come through with my permission and stuff, but and then shame on me for judging him and calling him ugly when how do I know I'm not the ugly one? <laughs> and then I started thinking, oh, okay, you're right about vanity because you know, I mean, who am I to judge? Look at me, fake fingernail teeth, fake fingernail teeth, fake fingernail teeth. <laughs> Makes me not so pretty, so pretty. Like 800 bucks would totally fix my mouth, but it might as well be a million, but. Anyhow, so I'm going to call my Master Mason today and um, plan to meet with him at his office and do the chant again. I'm going to try harder to get Pendar this time. Because, see, I can recognize Pendar. Draken, I knew Draken in my Master Mason's body for the first year that I knew my Master Mason. So he wasn't, I didn't have to chant to get Draken in there. Draken lived in his body all the time. He'd been in there for 20 years. And so I could talk to Draken, like, any time with the reptilian in him, with full conscious memory of the reptilians and Pandar and everything, and, and my past lives and, you know, things like that. And um, So Draken I knew mostly in my Master Macy's body, but then... Once a reptilian loses their body and becomes disembodied, well, they, um, because they're only warm-blooded and feel, feel human emotions when they're in the human body, but when they're not in the human body, they're not warm and they don't have the human emotions. I mean, they do, but they don't have the biology that, to, um, well, they're get, getting, uh, what I mean, though, is that they become more reptilian and more cold-blooded the longer that they're out of human bodies. And that's why I guess this reptilian Draco, whatever, it was so growly. You know, but then I'm trying to think, okay, well, what if they're trying to trick me? Or what if they're using mind control on me? You know, and... Because, see, the reptilians that are disembodied, there are more of them than the reptilians that have bodies here on the world. About 3%. Well, that was like three, four years ago that I was told 3%. Right now, I don't know, but I don't know how many people are in the world, but I think that makes it over a million people. And... They're inhabited with reptilian now, and so the reptilians that are trapped in hell that don't have bodies are way more than the ones here that do have bodies, but they don't like the reptilians here. They have bodies, and they don't like the queen, and they don't like it because they've been denied bodies, because um, some of them have had bodies that have been put back there for being punished, and some of them have never had bodies. I don't know how many there are, but um, it's like the closest thing, the best chance I have to get in a family that loves me or that accepts me or that will love me. I mean, I know the reptilians don't know love yet, but they love me more, more than the humans, humans do and accept me more than the humans do in this world. <coughs> The humans don't accept me here or love me and won't help me, not my family, not everybody that has ever been my friend has turned on me. You know, not one person, not one human in the world has ever been real when they say that they're my friend or that they love me or that they're my friend. You know, 
and then I think, okay, well, you know, all the lying that was going on, like saying that George Bush was going to come help me and put me through the fast, and then Leo calling me the day at the end of the boho rituals in July, at the end of July 23rd, a.m. of July 24th, you know, and him promising me he's not like everybody else, that he's going to come get me and help me and put me through the fast and get me pure so I could take care of you guys. You know, so I'm sitting there waiting and waiting, but then I'm starting to realize that this might all just be a big plot or plan. Lie to me, keep me waiting and waiting and waiting and thinking that somebody's going to come help me. And then to get my hopes up, and then when I realize that it's not real and that nobody's coming to crash me down, because if they can make you believe in something, I know I look like hell. <laughs> if I wasn't so homely, I'd be cute. <laughs> but when we get our memories, I mean, not our memories, but when we get hopes up about something and we want something and we really really believe in something like totally believe in something that's real and can happen and it doesn't happen the 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 higher the higher you go the harder the lo harder you fall the longer the fall the more you care the more you got to lose so many of us have been believed in something so much and wanted things to be so real and believed in things so much before and then have it turn out to not be real or true that we know not to get our hopes up about and believe too much about anything because we know that usually we get dropped on our head <laughs> you know and so it, it's, it's, it's a frightening thing to be to believe in anything because everything turns out not to be real <sighs> so I don't really know what I'm going to do I love you guys. I love you.